Yo guys, what is up? And welcome back to a new video. Now, because of lockdown and because the weather is disgusting, both of the mods that I'm going to be installing today don't require me leaving the car. So that's fantastic. I've got one of them here and I've got another one here. So before I go into what the cool one is, what the one that I think you're all going to want as well, I needed some of these because I've got the ST1, the base, the poverty spec, and I've got one button on there. Now, although I don't necessarily need them, I figured if I bought one like this, that looked like the ST3, I could custom these buttons to do things that I wanted myself. Now, although I'm not going to be making them custom today, installing this is one of the other things that I wanted to achieve, asides to the really cool one that I've got sat right here. So, right here, yeah, right here is the new clocks and the turbo clocks from SAS Conversions. Now, I would love to open them right this second and show you, but what we're going to do is we're going to roll the intro first, and in the first clip, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, if you would like to have some new clocks and you think the standard ones that you've got look shite, which I do, stick around. GC and the PT, roll the intro. Peace. <laughs> Right, guys, so in this little packet, let's have a look. Yeah, you guys can't see it from that side, can you? Or can you? So those are the ones that we're going to be installing. I don't know if you'll get a different angle from one side. They look so sick. As you can tell, when they go in the car and replace the boring ones, I'll show you now. Now, as you can see, the standard one looks pretty boring. Um, it's certainly not exciting anyway. But for now, these are the ones that we're going to be putting in. And obviously, we've also got one to go in the turbo gauge down in there as well. So I'm pretty sure my understanding of the situation is, is that you lower this down, which we can do now. Right. Got this one down a little bit. And so there's a bolt here and there's a bolt there. We're going to undo those and we're going to take this off. Now, before you go anywhere, you're going to want to take a picture of where the needles are at so that you can set them back that way when you put everything back together. I ignore the dirty state of my car but what you're going to want to do is take out this top piece that it should just pull out it's super simple it's only got these two clips here that just go into the holes either side of the bolt so obviously you're going to have to use a torque head on those which i've got the toolbox for here which is fine so yeah we're going to get those out and we can start investigating on just how easy this might be now i'm going to apologize for the glare on here temporarily there's not a lot i can do seeing as it's glass Right, guys, I am going to try my very best to do this in the best way possible. I've got my iPhone mounted up on the windscreen, so it's the best I can do without someone else to help me film. Now, obviously, when I've got Luke here, usually I can get him sat in the passenger seat right here with the camera, which makes things a lot easier. What we're going to need to do, like I said, we've taken this. I'll just run you through what I've done. We've taken this, we've lowered it down, and we've locked it in place. And we have also already taken this out in the previous clip. Now, these two things here, they simply slide into the holes either side of the torque head. Now, it just makes sense to put this to one side, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, guys, as you can see, I've chosen the honeycomb effect on this. It's going to look a lot nicer when the lights obviously light it up from behind. But because we're in lockdown, I've still got the standard bulbs in all of these. SAS conversions have offered to fit them all for me and change them all up to blue. So we're going to install these today and hope they look as fire as the LED strips that went in the door. What we're gonna do, get in the old toolbox, and, ooh, T20. All right, we can put the toolbox away now. We've got this tool that we need. That's probably the only one I can imagine we're gonna need for the time being. Right, guys, this is the first time I've done this. So obviously, we've got the correct tool here. Like I mentioned, there's only two small holes. So, if we can get into there, and see if we can, uh, That was easy. Let's hope it comes out as easy as the bolt did. Right guys, so I have already taken this off, off camera. Obviously naturally I rung the guy that provided the actual clocks myself just to make sure that I got his professional opinion so that I could show you guys. What you're gonna wanna do is take a plastic removal tool and stick it directly in the middle and then you release the clip. Honestly, I can't. So you wanna stick the plastic removal tool right into the middle and it releases the clip at the top and then you just pull it out. Once you've done that, the clocks will come out and you'll see there's a little connector here. Now that connector's got a little black switch on it. You just lift it up and pull it right out and it's that simple. And you've got the black clips all around the edges, which you're gonna wanna release. And then it takes off the glass panel off the front. Now what I've done, which I hope you guys avoid doing, 
is with the plastic removal tools, I've chipped the plastic. It's okay, because the guy that owns the company that provided the lights, he's gonna send me out a piece of plastic. Anyway, to fix that. But for now, I'm just warning you guys not to do that. Now, make sure that you put the needles the way they were before. You don't want them differently when you put them all back together. So take a picture of it so that you can set it back properly. So I'm gonna get these plastic clips off. Um, I am gonna put this inside just, just briefly just to give me a little bit more space. So we've got a little plastic clip here. One. Okay, so let's take this off like so. Right, now what I mentioned before is that these dials, you wanna make sure that they were set that way and they are set the same when you take them off. Now I can, oh yeah. Okay, right, standard one out, which is being replaced by this one. Right, so I'm just gonna take this one off and put the new one in its place. Now I'm assuming there's some little plastic clips in here that kind of take it into position properly. But it's these little plastic clips right here. You can just see them either side of the circle, top and bottom. They obviously hold it in place. That one is now held in place. Putting these back in, We've obviously put a couple of needles in already. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna take these little plastic pieces and put them back together. Now guys, with these actual needles, I've been playing around trying to work out how they work. And it works out here, There's, it's got some restriction on it so i've just twisted it to the right place pushed it down done the same with this one as well um you can see here that it puts resistance on it so you want to twist it to the right and then it should be okay so we can take these little plastic pieces and put them back on Okay, so there we have it. Obviously, that's nowhere near done because I need to clean this up, put it back in, and obviously see how it looks with the ignition on. But yeah, I mean, if we compare it to uh, the old boring one, definitely a nice improvement, 100%. Engine system's fault. Great, so uh, I'm going to find out how to fix that and try and get you guys to avoid it. Now, guys, now everything's put on properly, it's super important that these needles move freely. Now you can just see here the angle that they're not touching the card. Right, okay. Successful job, everything's put back together. Now obviously it's getting this on. But like I mentioned, I'm gonna run into the house now and grab a microfiber, because this thing is disgusting. I'm gonna try and clean it the best way that I can. Obviously now I've actually got it off the car and we can put this back together and stick it in and see how good it looks. Now I have got a microfiber, so it is gonna try and uh, remove all the dust if possible. Okay, guys, there we have it. <laughs> it's all looking good. Um, putting everything to the side, get everything plugged back in. Now, obviously getting this in. I apologize for the glare, that's normal. But yeah, this is how it looks currently. Let's get everything put back together and then we'll better have a look. But guys, as you can see, the LEDs are flashing. Light emitting diodes do that anyway, so that's fine. But the engine system's fault thing will happen and it will say reduce acceleration. It's completely normal. Obviously, once we've got everything put in, both here and here, we can take the car out for a drive and it will clear the code. All right, so don't stress about that. It's completely normal. This one's all complete. Everything's back in. Standard one has been removed. And, uh, and yeah, we're on to a winner. Right guys, so I am set at a slightly strange angle right now, but that's fine. But we're going to be taking this one out, the boost pod. And then once the boost pod is out, we can look at changing the clocks on that too. Now in this packet that I haven't yet shown you, to be fair, I haven't even looked myself. I'll take this out now. So similar principle. 
we've got those to take replacement of the ones that are in here. Oh my God, my trim is such a mess, but that's okay. We're gonna get these in here now. We're gonna take the boost pod out, put this to one side, source the plastic removal tool, which no doubt was done a runner. No, I found it, that's okay. So this one comes out. I remember this from last time. Easy, that comes out. Right guys, again, we're gonna to wanna to take out the plastic clip that sits in here. Okay, super simple. And then we can disconnect this the same way that we did last time. It's got the little clips in here. Push those through. Carbon bit can go to one side. And then we're gonna actually unscrew this again, which is the same tool. Awesome, like so. Right, finally, I've managed to get it off using a plastic removal tool and a kitchen knife. <laughs> which, yeah, not the best tools, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is exactly the same as we did in the last one. We're gonna take these clocks off. Obviously we're looking where they are now and they're all on zero, which is fine. So we're gonna take these off. And we're gonna put that one in place. It almost slots in into these little, uh, into these little places right here. So we're going to pop this back into here, screw it into place. Like so. I'll actually move this down so you guys can see what's going on. All right, guys, I managed to find the uh, Torx head on the end of the screwdriver, which I'd lost temporarily. So these screws here, get them tightened back in. And it will suck everything back into place. Now getting this back into place is as simple as plugging that in and pushing it back into place. Boom! But that one's been put in. Obviously this one we completed earlier. Now the moment of truth is, where's the forking keys? All right guys, so there we have it. As you've seen, the clocks have been done. Both of these old ones have been taken out and I will keep those to one side in a drawer, keep them safe somewhere. And thanks to SAS conversions, here we are. You know, we have the AirTech ones in. They are custom entirely. So anything you want on there, whether that be your name or a brand, obviously you can do that. Um, I chose the hexagon shaped ones because it's sort of a similar effect to carbon and I feel like it might work here with the carbon interior. But obviously I need to do this before we can do anything else. So obviously before the end of the video, I'm gonna try and fit these. But the question is, the unfortunate thing really is that it's a slightly different carbon effect, but that's okay. Um, it shouldn't be too obvious, but obviously I've got to take out the center console and take out the stereo. Um, I'm not gonna point the camera at that. I just felt that it was important to, uh, to have a little chat with you guys for once. Um, are you gonna come out? Are you gonna come out? Guys, finally, I've got round to actually getting somewhere progress. So I'll open the car now and show you where I've got to. Obviously it's not dark yet, so there's not a lot I can do in terms of the clocks, but behind the scenes, I've hoovered the car. I have installed these new buttons. I put a sticker there as well. I did actually remove the sports sign as I didn't like it. Put in my old gear shifter, because this one's bigger and heavier, which I prefer. Now, I didn't put in the new version that I showed you earlier in the video. I simply took the buttons out and put them in. And obviously in the future, I'll make them custom. The one in the middle is the only one that I had before. But yeah, as you can see, clocks are in. Can't wait to see them in the dark, but I'm assuming the lights probably aren't gonna be bright enough because I've obviously got the uh, the poverty spec ST. But yeah, I've also put a giant sanitizer in there as well. Now I've got one more thing to show you. Just close that up. I put this in the forum earlier, but I had a significant amount of damp. I didn't know where it was initially. It just smelled really bad in the car. So what I've gone and done now is I took this up and found out that there was a complete mess. So I've dried it up and found out that it was coming through here and the sponge that sits inside this that acts as padding uh, was wet. Now, if you look under here, well, you won't be able to see because I've covered it. There was a hole in this and I've also put some tape on both of those holes and then drilled through the holes with the, with the screws so that it's blocked off. I've also tightened up the whole spoiler just to make sure that that's all correct as well. And I just tightened up a few things around here as well. Now there's a couple of bolts like that one there, for example, that I need to replace because obviously that one's fine. 
This one I need to sort as well. But yeah, just been tidying bits up really. I'm a complete mess, but more importantly, I've got a few things done. Now, if you can see, the glove box is, is just wrecked. Now I have actually got one on the way at the moment, but the it's a facelift. So it's gonna plug in directly, but I'm actually gonna do a little switcheroo where you put the, well, at least where the old ignition start button was, you can put like a cigarette lighter in there or something. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, I just really wanted a new center console. Well, I just wanted a new armrest, one that worked and one that had storage in it. So uh, yeah, we're winning. Guys, I'm gonna wait a couple of hours and uh, wait till it's dark. And then hopefully we can show you how cool the clocks look. All right, so be patient and I'll see you very soon. Right, so although my lens doesn't prove it, it is dark and uh, it really doesn't look very dark, does it, on this camera? But yeah, what we're gonna do is we get in and just see what happens with these lights. Because like I said, I've never seen them before. So, um, I don't know if you can see, this is the key that everyone always messages me about. Okay, so it does light up blue. Um, brightness. Now one thing that you will notice is it's not as bright as something like auto beam. Now don't get me wrong, I can see it. It's in no way bad, but it's gonna look sick when the bulbs have been soldered in, the really good ones, all right? So obviously I've had to take this out earlier to get these buttons in. Now you can see that they all uh, light up. <laughs> even, they all light up even though they don't work. This is the only one that I've actually got traction control or ESP or whatever. I don't even know what these are because I've not had them. And then this, I don't have that either. But yeah, apparently I do now. Looks like I've got an ST3 or somewhere near anyway. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Could definitely do with being brighter, but we're gonna sort that so it's fine. I think that looks great too. Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back. It's the following morning. Now I've had the time to sleep on it and I think these clocks are sick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a couple of options up in this corner here that are now going through now so you can see them. As you can tell, the ST, AirTech, Hypertune, Dream Science, or any logo that you suggest having on your custom clocks can also be backlit too, if that's something you'd like. Now, all of his details are in the description section below, so go blow up his emails and get yourself some too, as I'm sure they will look sick in your STs as well. As always, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Smash a like on the video if you liked the clocks and you just want to support me in general. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video. For now, juice in the PT, roll the outro. Peace. Oh!